So a Series 1 is a term that um, was given to the vehicle in 1958 when the Series 2 came out. And all the vehicles previous to that Series 2 model became Series 1s. And you have a mix of products. This model, an 80 inch, you know, is a very short wheelbase. Yeah. It's you know, the original design. Um, once you went get to the next model, which was the 86, you had the sister vehicle, which was the 107, right. the longer wheelbase. And that all came about from the other great feature that uh, is in the uh, went through the series vehicles and Defender, which is the box section chassis. So this obstacle here, this uh, H-shaped pattern, is going to be slightly interesting in this vehicle because we don't have uh, traction control or um, blocking E-diffs or anything like that. So we might get to a point where the vehicle gets two wheels in the air and it may stop. So what we'll need to do there is back off. I'm going to just make it. There we go. So Perfect. just got that. And that's the thing of planning, once again, planning your route, planning your off-roading and um, what you're going to do. And in the case, if you do get stuck, how are you going to get out of it? Yeah, well, you can see how good this vehicle, this is the first, you know, the first model, the 80 inch, how capable it was just as a base vehicle. And as I suppose the world's become, technology has moved, you know, this is, this really benchmarked the ability of Land Rover. Oh, it's just, it just takes it in its stride. Incredible. So the vehicle is very original. Um, we uh, came across her in 2015 and thought what a brilliant opportunity to make this vehicle the first Land Rover Reborn. And she came back to Sully Hall in 2015. And uh, first thing we did was took her back to where she left as a box of parts. And uh, then we took her into um, a part of the factory uh, alongside the Defender line where the engineering department originally was in 1948, which was a really nice little feature, and she was uh, rebuilt there, so it was almost uh, starting from scratch moment, it was. It was quite, uh, quite an incredible thing to be able to be there back where it started life and have this vehicle in, uh, in restoration. So Huey's Land Rover number one, or pre-production number one. So um, before Huey, there was uh, a couple of uh, centre steer mule prototype style vehicles. Those, those other vehicles were needed to get the concept right. Having the vehicle correctly set up, as you would a Discovery, current Discovery or an Evoke or a Sport or whatever, um, it will give the customer and driver the confidence to operate the vehicle where you may not normally take a, an everyday car. I mean, the innovation really is in the four-wheel drive system, that ease of use, and the chassis. One of the things with the Series 1 vehicles is because the development was so rapid, you know, they went from nothing to, you know, the, the launch of um, the actual production line in 10 months. Wow. So, 10 months? in 10 months, yeah, so, yeah, from, you know, the end of 1947, yeah. you know, suddenly the production line was running in June, July, 1948. The Series 1 Land Rover, an icon in its own right. It's a real thing of beauty. Shall we take a deeper dive around and understand a bit more of the history? Yeah, absolutely. So the vehicle, when it arrived, it was, a, it was actually a multitude of colours, this, this one. It was originally bronze green. She was spent all her life in the outback. It was assembled in Australia originally and, uh, in 1950. And uh, on this massive estate, this massive cattle station, 25,000 hectares. So she was a little bit sunburnt, a little bit a little bit beaten, a little bit worn out, um, but she came back to Sully Hull and went through the process of being restored. When you get a vehicle to restore, obviously you've got a strategy, and one of the benefits of doing this at Land Rover, we've got access to all the engineering drawings and archives, so we can look at the vehicle, assess what needs to be do done to it, and decide whether that part needs to be restored or replaced. And that's the same with all of the reborn vehicles. I mean, Bonnet Catchers is such a, uh, such a classic piece. It's yeah, they're certainly uh, very 1950s and of the of the time, very functional. Definitely. So this is the 1.6 litre petrol engine, which is uh, puts out 55 horsepower. The vehicle isn't 
very heavy compared to a vehicle today. It only weighs 1,200 kilograms. So, um, yeah, it's more than enough power to keep her happy. Amazing, and I love how it's even got the original chassis plate at the back there. Yeah, there's certain parts of the, of the vehicle that you really want to try and keep original, and that plate there, we were able to keep it original. If you have a look at it, you can see it's ever so slightly worn and beaten and that. Yeah, so the, the seats are green vinyl, and that's exactly what the specification was in the day. We kept the original key, which is a replacement key from Newman's Hardware in Townsville in Queensland, so that's a little bit of authenticity there. One step they put in the early Land Rovers was to make sure that you had minimal process for operating the vehicle, which is one of those things which has stayed in the vehicle today. Hill descent control works exactly the same way in a modern Land Rover. 